world is made of many things. People, green trees, ladybugs, and peaches. All the things that grow and live. But all the living things are like the fuzz on a peach. Just a little something on the surface. Below the surface? Below the surface lies hidden treasure. This hard work is part of man's attempt to get below the surface. To find and use the mineral treasures buried in the earth and rocks. Gold. Silver. Salt. probably be wasting your time to dig in this mountain. There is a treasure of minerals in there, but they're scattered so thinly that they wouldn't be worth digging for. However, in many places in the earth, they have come together. To understand how this happened, we need to know how the crust of the earth is formed. The hot interior of the earth is covered by a thin crust only a few miles thick. This crust has been changing constantly ever since our Earth became solid, over four billion years ago. Great forces within the Earth caused the outer crust to buckle into mountains. At times, part of the land may sink and shallow seas form. The weather also causes changes. Material coming off the mountains forms layers of sediment in places miles deep. The huge weight of all this material hardens the lower layers into rock. At another place, great pressures may cause the hot rock to move slowly, slowly, heaving up new shapes. Great breaks or faults occur. Also, as rock pushes toward the surface, it cools, causing it to shrink and crack. Though the rock deep in the earth is hot enough to melt, scientists believe that it's kept solid by the enormous pressure from above. But in places where pressure is not as great, the rock may become liquid. The liquid rock is called magma. If it finds its way to the surface, it forms a volcano. But most magma flows into faults where it cools and finally becomes rock. And now we've gotten to the point where we can see one of the ways in which minerals become concentrated. The temperature is so high that certain chemicals are turned into hot gases. The gases meet underground water which boils into steam and together they push up through cracks. Finally the gases cool and the minerals are deposited. This kind of deposit is called a vein and the rock containing the mineral is called ore a rich concentration of minerals worth digging for.
copper, iron, and tin are some of the minerals that collect this way. As millions of years go by, the rocks containing the vein may weather away. If it is a heavy mineral, such as gold, the particles may be washed into a stream where they settle at the bottom. Another valuable mineral concentration. Other kinds of minerals that are washed down and mixed with the soil are changed by chemical action. They dissolve, seep through the earth, and someplace else a new concentration of mineral comes out of the liquid. This is the way our most valuable copper deposits have been formed. Most copper is mined from huge open pit excavations such as this one. Some minerals, such as salt, are dissolved from the soil and carried downstream. There have been shallow inland seas where salt collected for centuries. Then, during a hot, dry period, the seas evaporated, leaving a thick bed of salt, which in time became covered with sediment. Again, a rich deposit worth mining. Petroleum is another valuable material that collects in the Earth's crust. Scientists believe that it came from billions and billions of microscopic animals and plants that lived in shallow seas. As the centuries passed, huge quantities of these tiny plants and animals died and dropped into the mud where they slowly decayed. Geologists think that oil, squeezed from the plant and animal remains, was changed by the heat and the pressure of the sediments. The oil moved from the old mud beds into porous layers of sand or sandstone, becoming trapped between layers of non-porous rock. As more millions of years passed, the oil became concentrated in folds. Along with the oil, natural gas formed. Today, we drill deep shafts to bring up both of these valuable kinds of fuel. Another kind of deposit is, well, maybe you can guess which one this is. Like petroleum, this mineral is more valuable to us than gold or silver. It was formed ages ago when much of the earth had a steamy tropical climate. Thick vegetation grew in swamps, and as it died, layers piled one on top of another. At the same time, the land sank, keeping the water level just above the dead vegetation, so that instead of decaying, the vegetation was preserved. Then in places, the land sank faster and became the floor of a lake or a shallow sea. Sediments covered the dead vegetation, and the pressure gradually changed the plant material.
Liquids and other materials were driven out, leaving carbon, a valuable mineral fuel. We call it coal. sometimes billions of years for all these minerals to form in the Earth's crust. Years ago, early in the Industrial Revolution, we thought that the supplies would last forever. They won't. Not at the rate that we are using them up. to get concentrated deposits of many important fuels and minerals will be used up. Copper, gold, lead, mercury, tin, silver, zinc, petroleum, natural gas, and uranium. During your children's and your grandchildren's lifetimes, other minerals will probably begin to run low. Aluminum, cobalt, molybdenum, nickel, and tungsten. And as the easy-to-get rich deposits are used up, we will have to scar more and more of the Earth's surface, digging out ores containing less and less of the minerals. How much scarring can we afford to do? afford to dump metals and bury them with our other trash? Can we afford not to recycle? In one year, this small recycling center was able to save 291 tons of glass. 63 tons of steel. And 7 tons of aluminum. Can we afford to use metals when other plentiful materials would work as well? Can we afford to make things so that they wear out in just a short time? It's time we learn to use our mineral resources wisely. They are truly treasures of the earth.